Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you guys are here. My name is Jenna Lee. I am a homemaker just like you. I have messes, I have a family, we have muddy boots, we have dirty laundry. And just like you, I am trying to keep all of this stuff together, make it functional, but also I want it to be beautiful. So welcome to my 100 year old Victorian farmhouse laundry room. This room has come a long way and I have a few videos that you should watch if you want to start at the very beginning of this little makeover. I am passionate about bringing back old homemaking skills that have maybe been forgotten. So today I'm going to be sharing an inexpensive hack to vintage wall art. We're going to be organizing the practical things in the laundry room making a homemade powdered laundry detergent and also making some drop cloth curtains with a super simple and inexpensive hack on a curtain rod. I am on my last week of pregnancy. This baby could be coming any day now. So this week I really just did the things that I felt like I could do. One of those things was tackling the mud in this little mud room, laundry room. This room is small and it gets a lot of traffic. We constantly have kids coming in with muddy shoes, big muddy boots, let's face it, muddy bare feet. And so there's constantly messes in here and I'm constantly having to vacuum dirt up. So with such a small space, it's so important to have function and some order. So I knew that the flow of this room would be really important. Some of the things that I've added to this room are a muddy boot rack that we can put our boots up on so they're not laying all over the floor. We've minimized the shoe storage in this room. And also I decided to take a lot of the cleaning supplies that just kind of kept gathering on top of the shelf that I made here reorganize those, put them into some caddies and put them up into the bathroom so that they're not just floating around. And when it's time to clean the bathroom, we're going to know where those things are. I also threw away some cleaning supplies that I, that are almost gone or that I never use and just really brought it down to the minimal things. Since we are in the middle of summer, we only have summer seasonal things in here. So I decided to put all of our bug spray and sunscreen into a basket, all of the garden gloves into another basket, and really just keep the things that we are using at this time. I finally got around to hanging up these hooks up on this old pocket door that we found in the barn. When this house was renovated, a lot of the old charming doors were taken out and put out into the barn. So one of my goals was to bring that beautiful old world charm back into this space by bringing this pocket door in here and using it as a hall tree. Now I'm still not sure on the color of the store and the color of the bench and how they go together. And there's a little bit of painting on the wall that needs to be done. Maybe you can tell me what you think about those colors and what I could do differently if I should paint one or the other. One thing I've been wanting to do for a long time in this space is put up beautiful vintage art. I wanted pieces that would complement the time period of this home, the spirit of this home, and how I really feel about what we do here at the Pioneer Home. So I was really drawn to these beautiful paintings of the outdoors, farming, gardening, children playing outside. So I hopped onto Etsy and I put together my own collage. In fact, if you go onto Etsy and just search vintage farmhouse prints or something similar, you can find collages that are already put together that look beautiful together. You can put together your own collage and get those downloaded and printed out very inexpensively. Most of these pieces cost me a couple bucks a piece, a few dollars, a piece of art. And so collectively, it's very inexpensive. You want to download these pieces and you can download them in any of the printable sizes and just 
get them printed out at Walgreens or at Walmart. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a DIY on these prints to make them look less like a picture that you just printed out Walmart. So I always get them printed in matte. And then I'm going to go over these prints with Mod Podge glue. And what I'm trying to really create here is the texture that you would find in original oil painting. So I'm just going over the natural brush strokes that the artist already has here in the painting. And I'm trying to create big globby brush strokes where that glue is really standing out. I used matte Mod Podge, but you really could use gloss if you want it to stand out even more so. The beautiful thing about this DIY is you can't really mess it up. Like I said, you want to go with the natural strokes of the artist's brush. But that being said, this glue goes on white and it dries clear. So don't worry, <laughs> I'm not ruining all of these beautiful prints. I ran over to my favorite antique shop and picked up a few frames that were quite inexpensive. I first ordered the prints in the sizes that I wanted. And then when I went to the antique store, I knew exactly what sizes of frames that I would need. I was lucky enough to find a couple eight by 10 vintage frames here. I love working with antique frames because they always come with all the right hardware. They bring so much character. None of them are alike. It's not like you're going to Walmart or, or Hobby Lobby where they all look the same. You're always gonna find a unique piece. And so I was able to find a few pieces of antique frames and some of a couple of these pieces are actually recycled that I had floating around my house already, but I just love the way they turned out. If you love them too, follow my link down below in the description box. I'll put all these paintings from Etsy down below. Here is another very inexpensive but beautiful hack for you today. These are actually electrical pipes and they were $5 for 10 feet and half of that for five feet. So I got myself a couple 10 feet poles here. I spray painted them gold just because that was my preference, but you don't need to do that at all if you don't want to. I got them cut to the right length of my counter that I made here. And they come with these little brackets that are gonna work out perfectly for just installing right below this countertop. And what I really liked about this material and with these brackets is that they're sturdy so unlike a tension rod these rods are going to stay up on here they're strong and that really works great for this long countertop And this was the moment that I realized that this board could pop off since my screwdriver can't get underneath this top shelf all the way. And here I was struggling and struggling and struggling. And then I realized the board just pops off. So I can attach the clips. <laughs> and that's the beauty of being your own DIY contractor and not cementing things into place. Using drop cloth for curtains might be the oldest trick in the book, but I think if you are on a budget and if you love that natural fiber look in cloth and fabric, then it is a perfect way to go. And you can pick it up at your Home Depot or Lowe's, or you can order it on Amazon. I'll put a link down below for um, a good price on drop cloth. So this is what we're gonna be using for our curtains today. And so I've already washed the drop cloth and now I'm just ironing it. My curtain rod or piping is a half an inch. So I decided to make a two inch pocket seam for that rod to go through. And as I was finishing up the last seam here, the needle on my sewing machine broke and I was so frustrated. 
because the last project I did, the insides of my sewing machine popped out. But I did figure out how to put those back together by reading the manual and I was super proud of myself. Nonetheless, through my frustration, I decided to cut this piece down to size to put on the upper curtain and it worked out just fine. So I started thinking of a way that I could do a no sew treatment for the bottom half curtain. And I just so happened to have these little gold curtain rings that I had ordered just in case I needed them for this project. So I'm gonna show you guys a no sew option for hanging up a drop cloth curtain. So this is the option for a no sew hanging curtain with the drop cloth. And what you can do is just cut it to the right size. The nice thing about the drop cloth is it already does come with a seam. And you can just use that seam for the bottom and the side. Then you can just drop this cut side along the back. This is like super simplistic. And just make sure you figure out the length that you want it and go ahead and pin it. So I'll show you how to do that. So if you're not keen on sewing or if you are in a rush to hang up some curtains, this is a very easy way to do it. And I think it looks really cute. As for me in this space, I didn't like being able to see the utilities at the top of this curtain and through the rings. So my husband offered to pick up a sewing needle on the way home from work, and I'm gonna have to finish making it this ruffle top curtain that I really was going for tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm gonna share with you guys a simple homemade laundry detergent recipe. So not too long ago, I ran out of laundry detergent and I realized that I had all the ingredients to make my own and that they were very inexpensive. So I've been making it homemade ever since. Fells Naptha is a laundry soap bar that you can get at your local grocery store. And today I'm actually gonna try using a non-scented Castile bar of soap because I wanna add my own scent today. You can get the laundry soda, the borax, and the baking soda, and these bars of soaps at your local grocery store, or you can pick them up on Amazon, and I'll put a link down below. But first, you wanna start out by putting the shredding mechanism on the top of your food processor, and you're going to shred the bar of soap. If you have an extra piece of soap left over, just throw it on in because you're gonna put this all through the food processor anyway. Next, I'm going to add my scent. I really love the Mrs. Meyer's scents of laundry detergent and cleaning products. So I ordered her lavender scented laundry crystals, I guess you could say. And I'm gonna toss those into the food processor as well and grind those up as fine as I can. And the rest of the recipe is quite simple. You just add two cups of each of the next three ingredients and mix it all together. If the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars mm -hmm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy To the ones who lost their hope Dream. 
If you live out in the country, you know it's not always convenient to drop everything and run to the store, especially when you have little kids at home. So I was so grateful when my husband picked up an extra needle so I could finish my sewing project, bless his heart. And I was able to complete the look that I really wanted in this laundry room. So I wanted to create a little ruffle that went on top of the rod. So I left about really a half an inch because there's not really a gap that I'm trying to cover here. I just wanted a little bit of ruffle. So there's about a half an inch ruffle on top of the seam that the bar is going to go through. And then I also made a bigger pocket for the rod to go through this time because this fabric is much thicker, much bulkier, and needs a little bit more space so that it can slide along that rod nice and easily. So I created a nice four inch gap of a pocket seam for the rod to go through. But if you're working with linen or a light cotton, you could definitely go with that two inch gap. Also keep in mind if you're going for this ruffle look that you're gonna need a lot more fabric. So if you're working with a lighter fabric, you could double the length of, of fabric that you're gonna need to have that nice ruffle. I did one and a half a length of the space for the ruffle because I'm dealing with a thicker fabric. If you are finding this channel for the first time, welcome. I am over the moon, happy that you are here. This is a place where you will hopefully always be encouraged, always inspired. Like I said, I am so passionate about what I do in my home. It's not really about the laundry detergent or putting up fancy curtains or, or even how it completely looks. It's always about restoring home, family, and spirit and really the feeling that is happening in the home. So I hope that you will stick around, catch up on some of my older videos, push that subscribe button, and also click on the bell notification so that you know when I put a video up, I strive to put a video up each week. We are so excited to be expecting our fourth baby anytime now, and so, go ahead and keep track of the community posts. I try to keep you guys pretty updated on what's going on there in our lives on the farm and also when a new video is coming up and what it's gonna be about. I love hearing what you guys have to say. I love hearing what your favorite project or recipe is down in the comments below. And I also love hearing what new ideas and things you wanna see here on the channel. So go ahead and comment down below all the good things. Just know that I'm over here in your corner cheering you on <laughs> and I'll catch you next time. Love you lots. Hey, if you're still watching, keep watching. Sometimes I like to leave a little bone for those who watch through the end of the video. <laughs>